places identified. We want to find a place that's going to be in the sun like all day. So we don't want to be in the shadow of a building or a tree or something. Okay? And you're going to take, uh, you're going to have a pencil, a piece of clay, a compass, and you need to bring a pencil. We're also going to have some tape. Okay, so, so we're going to need to tape down our piece of paper on all four corners so it doesn't blow away. You're going to use the compass and you're going to find what direction is north. And so you're going to, you know, mark your mark a little arrow pointing north on your piece of paper, just up in a corner somewhere. And you're going to want to stand your pencil up, stand your pencil up with the piece of clay as straight as possible and maybe slightly on the southern side of the sheet. Okay, so so now, and also we're going to try to find, you know, I'm going to show you where the, the sidewalk is as level as possible, too. So, so I've got a couple of places I'll take you to, and we're going to have to split up a little bit. Okay, so you put your pencil, stand up with the clay uh, as straight as possible, sort of slightly on the north, uh, southern side of the sheet. And then you're going to mark the tip of the shadow with the pencil and put what time it is. Okay, so that pencil is going to make a shadow from the sun, and you just need a dot right at the tip of that shadow. Okay, so one thing I did forget to say is the first thing you're going to do is you're going to make a dot on your piece of paper where the pencil's going to be. So when we take it up, we want to know where the pencil was. So we'll make a dot, stand the pencil up with the clay, mark the tip of the shadow, write down what time it is. And then we're going to come back in and we're going to do some stuff. In an hour, we're going to go mark it again. And so we're just going to mark it like every hour. And so what we're looking for is uh, how that shadow is going to change. And uh, now solar noon is the time when the sun is going to be the highest in the sky that's going to be all day. And what will the shadow look like then? So if the sun is as high in the sky as it's going to be, what's the shadow going to be like? I think it's shorter. It's going to be shorter, okay? So, so in the morning, you know, we're going to look the morning right now, we're going to see the shadows are pretty long, okay? So the sun is just rising, you know, in the east, and so it's low in the sky, the shadows are going to be long. When the sun is more overhead, shadows are going to be short. If we were, if we were somewhere sort of directly under the sun, the shadow would disappear. But we're not oh, south yeah. enough for that. So we're going to see that you know, we're going to have a, sh a short shadow even at solar noon. Okay, so um, now this activity is like, you know, there's like multiple, multiple options that I've got here handed out. So we're going to be doing the analysis this afternoon. So, uh, you know, <clears throat> So for how many of you are like kindergarten through two? Okay. So you know we're going to do the pencils. You could do you could do that with them. And so, but there's an easy, er, easier version that we'll do. And so maybe I'll get some of you guys to volunteer to do the, the sort of simpler version where you're going to trace your own shadow. Okay. So so maybe you guys you know the two the younger kids might want to do that, and we'll all look at because. Uh, for example, that might be a great uh, engage activity if you're going to do, you know, middle school or high school. Uh, you can do that with a curve, let them trace their shadow, see how it changes over the day, and then we can get into doing the measurements. Okay. So again, there's going to kind of be lots of options, two different, somewhat different activities you can choose to do, and then even with the pencils, there's different levels of what you can have them do. Okay. So. Uh, any questions that you have right away? I don't know. I think yours is about that one. Uh, uh, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Which way is north? 
So lay your little compass down up in the corner somewhere. So which way is north? North. <laughs> so that way. Yeah. Point for me. Okay. All right. I guess I'll just put me an E in. That was north. Yeah. An arrow. Good idea. Yeah. It's a bad error. I don't have a pencil with it. No, that'll work. <laughs> North is that way. All right? Yep. That's where the compass is. Somewhere on the slightly on the southern side, and make a dot. And or I, you want me to use a pencil rather than a, a Well, a, a pencil, dot. in case it rains on our paper, a pencil won't run. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, here you go. It'll come out of my pocket. Okay, under the Are pencil. Are we putting or? a time by it? Yes. Okay. So, okay. So use your clay. Now, what I would do is make it a little more in the middle. Because what's going to happen right now is that way. I know, right? You need like a key and you need like one, two, three. <laughs> if he says it's good, I will. Alright. So, I'm to put this So, just put it on the dot or under? On the dot. Okay. And just try to make the pencil stand up around the clay. Yeah. There you go. And just stand it up as straight as you can. Okay. So make it not. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you want it standing as straight as you can get it. Okay. Now mark that dot and put what time? 24. Okay. 9.24. Yeah, I'd write it pretty dark, like I said, just in case it, okay. it decides to sprinkle at your insurance. Okay. Okay, and then put a dot right there at the tip. Okay. Now you want to put it right at the tip. We're going to measure this. Right, oh, right at the tip of the shaft. Yeah, make it right at the tip of the shaft. Oh, okay. So you might come over here so your hand doesn't say, line. Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So when you got your pencil stood up, you can put a dot right at the tip of that shadow and mark the time. Okay, so so right on the tip of that shadow, make a dot. Right on the tip. Okay. So doing the kindergarten shadow tracing thing. So there's his feet. Alright. Stay back there every single time. Okay. And well, what I could do is. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so we'll be able to see where it started. All right. Okay. And we're going to say that was 920. Okay. All right. Yeah, get, get that part on right there. Right there. Okay. And you're prepared. Yep. All right. So you see you have your students right there. Yeah. Now, if you do this on the basketball court, mm -hmm. playground, you know, uh, uh, the sidewalk, if the sidewalk runs uh, north and south, now, that would be this? better. That's the time. Yes. Woo! So, where was your point an hour ago? <laughs> Right here. Did you even see? Yeah. Uh, that's your point an hour ago. So then now. It's right here. Uh huh. Okay. Right. Much, much shorter. Much, much shorter. Wrong time, wrong time. Don't take pictures yet. Okay, so put your okay, finger. Yeah. You just want to put, put your finger on, on one dot and the other finger on the other dot. Wow. That's a big difference. Yep. One hour. This is an hour later, the next chalk drawing. Now what you could do, I guess, is use different colors. And so, um... It's getting a little wet. Still see part of it, though. Two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 
so how many centimeters? Okay, straight line. Okay, so So this little blob here is where the pencil was, and these, you know, cryptic marks are times and dots, okay? So I'll, I'll pass these around. So there's a couple of things, there's a couple of things that you can show your students. Okay, so a couple of things you can show your students. The, the, shortest, the shortest shadow, the shortest shadow will be at least near solar noon, okay? So today... That would have been almost exactly an hour ago. So, the, so today's solar noon was approximately 12.50. So unfortunately, he said it was cloudy, but that's what we would have seen. You can find when solar noon's going to be on a given day by going to the NOAA website that's listed in your handout. Okay, so you you uh, move a little arrow and show you can put the little uh, like a Google you know marker where your school is. Uh, it's, the, it's the longitude that matters, and you need to click whether you're in daylight saving time or not, and it'll tell you that time. So today it would have been 12.50, so we didn't quite you know, get there today. Now you can see on the, uh, on the uh, so you can see on this handout, the shortest one was at 12.52, and so it was pretty close to the same time as today. Okay. Now, there's a couple of other things uh, well, there's one other thing at least that you can show them. So, so first is, you know, you can just measure the shadows. You can make a graph like this if you want to. Um, the other thing is the shadow, the shadow at solar noon will point north. Okay, so it'll point true north. And so that's one reason for putting the, the compass direction on there. So it's a way if you really wanted to know where north was, you can find it that way. Okay, so it points to true north, which is, you know, the axis of the earth, not magnetic north, which is where the compass points. In Alabama, that's only a couple degrees difference. So, here in California, it might be, I think it's 8 or 10. So, um, so now, for, for younger kids, that might be all you need to show. Okay, so the shadow length is an indication of how high the sun was. So again, we got really short shadow, you know, we're in the summertime. So part of the goal is you might do this in the winter and show them a longer shadow at solar noon because the sun's going to be lower in the sky. And so it'll help you show that's why we're in winter is because the sun doesn't get as high in the sky, the days are shorter. Okay, so when, when it gets to be close to time to school to let out, you can do this and you know it'll be high, you know, not as high as today, but almost. Okay? So that's one place that you can stop this exercise is just with the shadow length. Uh, again, I was shown this, you know, it's kind of fourth grade. Okay. So this was kind of a fourth grade type activity. Again, for younger than that, you can do the VMI shadow, you trace the shadow. You actually will see the same things. So you could, you could use a tape measure to measure the shadows and and again, your shadow will point north, you know, at solar noon. It'll be the shortest and it'll point north. Um, kind of in that exercise, we kind of got in there practicing with the directions, okay? So get them all facing north and say, okay, in the morning, which side's your sun on? You're right, that's east and so forth, okay? So um, now, for uh, a little older students, and again, you know your students better than I do, one thing we can calculate from this is what was the elevation of the sun. So we can calculate what angle we have to the sun. So, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line, and you can do this on your big sheet if you want. Draw a line, or you can get a new one, uh, a line that is the length of your pencil, as close as you can. Then use your protractor and measure off a 90 degree angle 
Okay, so all right, so you're going to measure the pencil that you used. Measure the pencil that you used. And then you're going to... And in a right angle here, you're going to back off the shadow there. Then we're going to draw... I don't know. This angle... So we're going to measure that angle up to the sun. And we would like to be doing this for so long. You can do it for one of your Okay. There's a couple of ways. There's a couple of ways that you can get that angle. Okay, so. So there's a couple ways you can get this angle. Again, depending on the level of your students. One is, okay, so you're going to draw a line that's actually the length of your pencil. And then another line, using your protractor, make a right angle here. Okay, so put, put your pencil on 90 and make a mark out here at zero. Okay. Extend this line out the length of your shadow. Okay, so we want to make sure we have a right angle there. Okay, so this is good practice for using the protractor to measure angles. And then you're just going to connect the ends of those to make a right triangle. Okay? The simple way to get, simplest way to get this angle is then measure that angle with the protractor. Now, you're going to use the protractor. Okay, so put the protractor right on that. And we're going to line this up with 90. Okay, so make a mark out there at zero. Right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now say how long was that shadow? Mm -hmm. here to here? No, no, this, the shadow. Okay, what would you go down? What, the last one, what was the length? Uh, 2.7. Okay, so, so you're going to line your ruler up. Oops, we need this way. All right, so we're going to put zero on our pencil line, and we're going to line the ruler up with that so we can draw perpendicular, right? And make a mark at 2.7 centimeters. Okay. Two, five, six, seven, yeah, so it's going to be a skinny triangle. Okay. Okay? So now finish that line there. Okay, and now we're going to connect from there to there. All right here. Mm -hmm. That's okay. You can always. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so now we have a right angle here. Okay. So, so the so when the sun made that shadow, the sun was up here at the top of the pencil, and it made that shadow. So now, one the easiest way is to now put the center of your protractor here and measure that angle. Okay, so you're measuring this angle right there. Okay, so you want to make sure that you, uh, let's see here, you might want to extend that line, but we want to try to get this line on the zero, okay? So we need to extend this, mm -hmm. extend it a little bit. Can't see. I'm doing the back. Okay, right here. Trying to make sure it's straight. Straight. Mm -hmm. That works. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you see it. Put this on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Mm -hmm. 
like about 10. It here's 10. So we can use some trigonometry. So, okay, so we have, we have a right triangle here. We have a nice right triangle here. And so, we're interested in measuring this angle. So, we have the length of this side of the triangle, which is the opposite side to that angle. Okay, so this side is the opposite side to angle theta. This side, what do we call the long side of a triangle? Of a right triangle. Okay, so that's the hypotenuse. Spell that right, Yep. <laughs> and on this side, this is the side that makes up one of the sides of that angle. So this is the adjacent side to theta. And there's a function called the tangent of theta is the ratio of those two, opposite over adjacent. Okay, so just the ratio of those is called the tangent. So, um, so if you measure your pencil, so how long was your pencil in centimeters? Nineteen. Okay. Okay, and what was what was the length of your short shadow? Let's say. So, somebody give me a short shadow blink. 6.5? Okay, so we're going to say, okay, what's the ratio of those two? Okay, so 19 divided by 6.5. Okay, so I get 2.92. Okay, everybody follow? Okay, so there, there's two ways that we can get this angle theta from this. One is we can use our calculator. Okay, tell it, give us the inverse tangent of 2.92. Now, there's a table in your handout of every angle and it's tangent from, I don't know, you know, 0 up to like 80 something, okay? So you can find the number in that table that's closest to 2.92. And so, um, okay. so, so I'm looking in the tangent table and I see there's a 2.90 at 71 degrees. Okay, so so that would I'm pretty sure that would be the closest, okay? So that tells us that the angle here So your students can do this even if they don't, you know, know the trigonometry. So the angle had to be Now there's another cool thing that you can do with this. That, um, you can use this to measure the height of something that's too tall for you to measure, like with a tape measure, a ruler, or something. Okay, so so like let's say you want to measure the height of this building. Okay, so. To do that, what you need to do is you need to cite the angle here to the building at a measured distance that you measure off 
and you can use this table to try to find, to find this as well, okay? So there's a, there's a globe exercise to do that, okay? So again, it might be something you want to do too. So, so it's the same idea, just a different use of the team. Any questions? Okay, now. Um, we can kind of run through how to do this quickly using, uh, you might want to just flip to this part right here, in case there's a picture of doing this. This is the data, exactly the data that I gave you in that handout. Okay? Here's the idea of how this approximation works. Is if you had shadows before and after solar moon, if you had two shadows that were the same length, they were an equal time before and after solar noon. Okay? So, so if you found two shadows that were the same length, they were the same time before solar noon and the same time after. You might get lucky and that happened, and then solar noon would be the angle exactly between those two. But, you know, that would be a stroke of pure luck, maybe, unless you really planned it, okay? So, so let's say, that just like the picture here, we pick one of our longer times, okay? So 1138 was one of our longer shadows. And uh, not the longest, but one of the longer ones before solar noon. And I'm going to look and see if I have another point that's the same length. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my compass to that radius, okay? So a drawing compass like, like this, okay? Borrowed this from one of the mathematicians, okay? So, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to set this to the distance of one of my longer, earlier shadows. All right? So I'm going to put the center, put the center on my pencil point, set it to this, and I'm going to draw an arc. Okay, so, okay, that arc is going to come over here somewhere. I'm going to cheat a little bit. Okay, so it came close to that point, but not quite. Huh? So, I'm going to draw one line here. That represents that shadow. If that one had been exactly the same length, it would be on that arc, but it's not quite. I'm going to move it a little bit more, actually. So it'll be a little clearer. Okay? So I don't have one that's the same length. What we're going to do is we're going to approximate. I've got one on each side of it. So I draw a line between those two. And so right there is where the shadow would have been if it was the same length, right? So I draw line through that point. Okay, so if I had gotten lucky, I would have a measurement right there, but I didn't. So, so that's all I had to do to find where that, where that one with the same shadow length would have been. Okay, so I know that solar noon, solar noon is halfway from here to here in terms of angle. There's two ways I can do that. The easiest, well, one way is I can take my protractor and measure that angle. And it is, uh, I'll say it's, uh, it's all, in this picture, it's almost like 94 degrees. Okay, so, okay, so, okay, so what would the angle halfway between be? Forty-seven. Right? So half of ninety would be forty-five, and I had, I guess, yeah, I had two. 
Okay, so so I can measure off with my, I should use the protractor first. So I measure off 47 degrees and that would be the direction for my solar moon. Okay, so and that wouldn't be, that doesn't give me the shadow length yet, but that would be the direction. So that should point north. Okay. So so um, I'm going to extend that a little bit. Okay, so. Now, there is another way to split the angle in half using the compass. You can read the instructions if you want. It's kind of illustrated in here as well. So, um, I'll stick with using the protractor and halving the angle. Okay, but you can do it graphically, you know. Kind of in the old days, they did this, you know, draftsman, okay, if they need to find half the angle. Short version, you know, just is what you do is you would draw, draw an arc really of any size, and that's what's shown there from A to B. Okay, so I draw an arc from point A here to point B there. Then I set the protractor to the distance between A and B. Okay, can't quite do it with this one, but I would set the protractor to the distance from A to B. Then I draw an arc out here, starting from A. Okay, so it's going to make a little arc like that. I make the same arc starting from B. And you see where they cross. They cross right on that one. Okay, so it's a graphical way to do that instead of using just using the protractor. So, some of your students, that might interest them, okay, might be useful. Okay, now, we'd like to narrow down the time and the length of shadow for Sol and Moon, because, you know, in this, in this example, we missed it. Okay, so we can do some more math. We can connect, we've got two, we've got two times, two times here, one before, one after Sol or Noon. Connect those with a line. We can use proportions to figure out what time that should have been. So the correct length actually would be right there. Okay, so if all I want is the correct length for solar node, it would have been right there approximately. If I want to get the time, I can use proportions. Okay, so I can measure the uh, distance between these two millimeters distance between those two millimeters and subtract the times in minutes okay so uh, in the example you have here um, the uh, in the example there was 39 minutes between those two measurements okay so what I want to know is how many minutes how many minutes after that measurement would solar noon? So I call that just that amount of time x. X over 39 is the same proportion of 39 minutes as this distance. So I measure this distance. Okay, so in the example. The distance from this time to that solar moon line was 29 millimeters. Okay. I'm sorry, 33. Okay. 39 minutes and the distance between was 33 millimeters. Okay. So, so the distance between these two points was 33 millimeters. The time between those two points was 39 minutes. 
I want to know how many minutes between here and the solar moon line is x. The number of millimeters between this time and my solar moon line was 29 millimeters. And you can solve for x, and that turned out to be 34 minutes. Okay, so this is all in your hand. Mm -hmm. And so this time happened to be um, 12, 13. Okay, so 12, 13 plus 34 minutes. So that solar moon was at 1247. Okay, so. That way you can, if you miss it with your students, you know, you can show them how to get it. Okay, so the, um, the illustration that's in your handout is that same data that I handed out to you. So, again, that would be, you know, maybe for your, you know, eighth grade through high school, something like that, okay? So it shows them how to do proportions, angles, that kind of stuff. Kindergartners, trace the shadow. 